What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with The Golden Perspective. Today, we're looking at the Glassnode Insights, the week on chain, week 31, coming up here really soon. Before we get into it, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have over the years. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications, right? You need to know when the next video is coming up. And leave me a comment after you have digested this video or you've watched enough. Let me know what you have to think. I really wanna hear from you. And go down into the details or the description and find any of the links that I have on any of the other socials. There's a bunch of things I think you might find interesting in there because I do. And if you're watching me, you may just also resonate with that. So let's get into it. Beginnings of a bear market rally. I don't know, is it? Both BTC and ETH have rallied coming off extremely oversold conditions and spurred on by risk on sentiment following the July FOMC meeting. Attention now turns to whether it's a bear market relief rally or the start of a sustained bull, bullish impulse. Bitcoin and digital asset markets responded strongly to the Federal Reserve 75 basis points rate hike this last week, with BTC closing up to 5.7% and ETH up 7.6% on the week. Broader markets responded positively to the FOMC announcement as Chairman Powell indicated that the current target Fed funds rate at 2.25% to 2.5% was now considered neutral and eyes were on developing data on economic slowdown. In many regards, recent positive price action for Bitcoin and Ethereum gives much awaited relief to the bulls who have weathered almost nine months of persistent downtrend. The 2022 bear market has been historically negative for the digital asset space. However, after such a sustained period of risk off sentiment, attention turns to whether it is a bear market relief rally or the start of a sustained bullish impulse. In this edition, we'll explore this concept utilizing on-chain activity as a baseline and whether the market is signaling an influx of new demand or if it lacks sustained follow through. See here on the chart in green is the range in which we started and finished off looked really good throughout the week. Bitcoin activity grinds sideways. Generally speaking, an influx of new demand into blockchain networks is supported and signaled by sustained upticks in usage on chain. We can use both on-chain activity and supply dynamics to assess performance relative to recent comparable history as a guide. Bullish impulses tend to be described by rising and elevated on-chain activity as more users enter the network. Generally, this is supported by increasing volumes of supply changing hands at a profit as older investors sell and new demand absorbs these coins. Bearish impulses tend to see declining on-chain activity, often in a violent and rapid flush out. Bear markets then take time to recover as supply rotates from speculators back to long-term and high conviction holders. Bitcoin active addresses remain firmly within a well-defined downtrend channel. Note, also how the October through November uh, all-time high reached significantly lower peak than the April 2021 all-time high, suggesting a major washout of users had occurred and demand did not follow through. With the exception of a few activity spikes higher during major capitulation events, the current network activity suggests that there remains little influx of new demand as of yet. The demand for on-chain transaction and block space tells a similar story. The market structure of the last year is quite similar to the 2018-19 period. After the initial washout in the demand destruction, May of 2021, transactional demand has traded sideways to slightly lower, indicative that only the stable base of higher conviction traders and investors remain. As a result of lackluster transaction demand, on-chain transaction fees are firmly within bear market territory, seeing only a 13.4 BTC in total fees paid out per day. Similar to active addresses and transaction demand, the demand destruction is visible in May of 2021 as network congestion collapsed and fees started forming a bear market baseline. Bull markets typically maintain elevated fee rates and often are one of the first signals of on-demand or of demand recovery. While we have not seen a notable uptick in fees as of yet, keeping eye on this metric will likely be a signal of recovery. We can see these observations by looking at the average data footprint in bytes of Bitcoin blocks. Network congestion of and full blocks will result in larger block sizes as miners fill blocks as tightly as possible to earn maximum fee revenue. Low network congestion and partially empty blocks will result in smaller blocks as they are insufficient transactions for miners to fill all capacity. 
Note that Segnet was a technological upgrade to Bitcoin that attracts, that acts to increase the maximum data capacity of Bitcoin blocks. Prior to June of 2021, Segwit adoption was below 55, 55%, meaning the maximum block capacity was smaller than it is now. However, given Segwit adoption has now reached an excess of 72%, there is more effective block space capacity, yet current congestion is even lower than it was in May of 2021. This indicates that overall, the Bitcoin network remains hodler dominated and as of yet, there has not been any noteworthy return of new demand on the network as viewed through the lens of on-chain activity. On a more positive note, however, the capacity in Bitcoin Lightning Network uh, public channels continues to print all-time highs. Lightning Network public capacity has now reached 4,405 BTC, which is an increase of 19% over the last two months despite the prevailing bear market. This metric measures the liquidity available for users to send value routed through nodes that have, been, uh, that have public channels. This is a good gauge for expanding network effects. It does not account for private channels set up between two counterparty pri uh, parties whom have not opened up their node for public routing. So what that means is uh, you and I, or you and any other person, can set up a direct channel between your lightning nodes and not allow public routing uh, for like, if nobody else has a lightning channel, like a lightning node, and they just open up a channel through an app that allows it, they would have to utilize one of those public open nodes to route through. The Ethereum network now has experienced many of the same trends as Bitcoin over the last 12 months seeing a gradual, gradual deterioration of aggregate network usage and congestion. Despite powerful price action over the last few weeks, Ethereum network congestion is in fact the lowest it has been in some time, mani manifesting as multi-year lows in gas prices paid for confirmation. Ethereum transaction demand has been in a gradual decline since the May 2021 sell-off, seeing only a short burst of activity in recent weeks. If this trend can continue higher, it may be constructive, as is one to keep an eye on. Ethereum tends to have a larger pool of transactions in the mempool compared to Bitcoin and consistently sees block space filled up to 99.99% or more capacity. As a result, the gas price paid is often a superior method for tracking true congestion. This acts to capture the urgency of users seeking transaction confirmation as measured by the value they are willing to spend on fees. The chart below shows average gas limit, which is the maximum gas that miners can fit into block, currently 15 million, but can expand to 30 million under the EIP 1559. The average, the next one is average gas consumption per block, which is the actual usage profile relative to the gas limit. And then there's the medium gas fee in GUI, which can be seen to expand in periods of demand and contract during quiet periods of low congestion. Ethereum gas prices have recently declined to just 17.5 GUE on a seven day medium basis. This is the lowest network congestion and gas price since May of 2020, which was prior to the DeFi summer and before the initiation of the bull market. This signals that despite recent positive price action, there has not been an influx of new usage and overall the Ethereum is at a multi-year low in relative activity. As a result, the ETH burn rate via EIP-1559 is now at an all-time low. Total ETH burn is now just 11% of the total issuance. Ethereum has only crossed into deflationary territory on three occasions in the past under the current issuance schedule. This effectively means a relatively large volume of ETH is making it into circulation in comparison to post-EIP-1559 history. To close this piece, we will assess the market structure of Bitcoin and Ethereum through the lens of the SOPR metric. SOPR captures the average profit greater than 1.0 or less than 1.0 realized by the market on spent coins, generally speaking. High values greater than 1.0 indicate larger magnitude of profits are being realized and the market has sufficient uh, demand flowing in to, to absorb it. Then there's a bull market support is characterized by SOPR values of 1.0 acting as support as investors buy at their cost basis during pullbox, pullbacks. Low values indicate larger magnitude losses are being realized and investors are selling coins below their cost basis on average. 
Bear market resistance is are characterized by characterized by SOP values of 1.0 acting as resistance as investors sell their cost basis during rallies. For Bitcoin, SOPR is attempting to break above 1.0 for the second time since early June. Usually, the market requires a number of attempts before escape velocity can be reached. An ideal bullish scenario would be a break above 1.0 and then a retest finding support. Ethereum has had more luck piercing above SOPR value of 1.0 and finding its first retest as support. However, given the somewhat lackluster on-chain activity metrics explored above, it is prudent to watch for a reversal back below 1.0, which could signal weakness. This would resemble previous bearish periods where a brief excursion above 1.0 can be observed before rejecting back into the net loss territory. In conclusion, both Bitcoin and Ethereum have seen a rebound in prices this week coming off the back of extremely oversold conditions and spurred by on-risk sentiment following the July FOMC meeting. However, under the surface, on-chain transactional demand remains lackluster at best and this rally has not yet seen a convincing follow-through in observable demand activity. The net result is that Bitcoin blocks are partially empty, Ethereum gas prices are at multi-year lows, and the rate of the EIP-1559 burning is at all-time lows. Of course, on-chain activity is only part of the picture, and early signs of SOPR profitability returning are encouraging. Attention can now shift to whether these uptrends can be sustained and approved as a gauge for whether this is a simple bear market relief or a more constructive structural shift towards the upside. All right, let me know what you got to think. This is a fabulous uh, and simple run through this week. Are we in a relief rally of a bear market? Are we starting to move through a consolidation phase and building momentum towards the next bull market. Let me know what you got to think down below. And again, hit that like button and let's talk. Talk to you soon. Peace.